Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at 11 starts now. The heavy snow is now moving out of Metro Detroit, but making way for bitter cold conditions with icy roads a concern overnight as we head into tomorrow morning. Glad you're with us tonight. We are talking about temperatures dropping near single digits now. Andrew is here with today's snow totals as well as tracking the dangerous cold, Andrew. That's right, Kimberly and Devin. First, the snow totals for today, pretty impressive for what we received today. Two and a half inches or nearly two and a half inches over at Metro Airport, officially for Detroit, but over five inches in Lake Orion, 5.4 inches there, five inches in Lapeer. Shelby Township also at five inches, so those were some of the high marks. Or just over four inches in Sterling Heights, White Lake just over four inches as well. While elsewhere on the east side of Detroit, we received three inches, three and a half inches over in Rochester Hill. So overall between two and four inches generally with isolated spots up to around five inches or a bit more. And now the snow is leaving us. The persistent snowfall is left. We have some leftover flurries that are around that are not going to add to much and they'll continue to dissipate as we go through the overnight hours. But oh boy, does it get colder or what? Not only actual temperatures in the single digits, uh, wind chills will make it down to zero or even less. Wind chill tomorrow morning in places like Pontiac down to minus two. Here in Detroit at Metro Airport, minus one. It will feel like minus five if your skin is not protected in Ann Arbor. So while it will be drier, we need to layer up. And of course, remember your hat, scarf, and gloves for tomorrow morning. Any more snow though for tomorrow, including the afternoon? That and your seven day forecast in minutes. Andrew, thank you. And as those temperatures plummet overnight, our local road commissions are sounding the alarm. Tim Pamplin has been all around Metro Detroit today and joins us now with the concerns for tomorrow morning's drive. Well, the snow has finally moved out. We're heading up 75 here. Uh, on the left, you see the salt truck and the plow doing the best they can to keep up, but the damage is done. The roads are now wet and there's concerns. There'll be a big problem come the morning rush. The snow started tapering off around 9 o'clock this evening in Shelby Township, leaving a blanket of what my neighbor called Christmas snow. Very picturesque and super lightweight. And crews have been out all evening pushing, shoveling, and plowing the sidewalks in the neighborhoods. Cleans it almost better than the shovel does. Nate Nagy puts the blow into snow blowing. <laughs> I got a snow blower, I got a shovel, but yeah, this uh, for light, light powdery snow, this, this does. Uh, does it a lot faster and a lot better than anything else. So as the cleanup continues, the concern we spoke of earlier is for those temperatures tonight, dropping well into the single digits. It has road commissions across our town on high alert. One of the concerns is that as the temperature drops, the salt becomes less effective. And in the early morning hours, we're concerned uh, if we don't have things cleaned up and dried up, that it could get some refreeze and that might be a problem before the morning rush hour. We do have some concerns with just the extreme temperatures uh, that we want to uh, continue to warn drivers to be safe out there and definitely watch out for those slick spots because uh, they're out there. So back out here, make sure you got washer fluid in your car. You'll need that. The various road agencies will be working through the night, they tell me, doing what they can. But science dictates the rock salt does next to nothing in these projected frigid temperatures that is foreseen on the highways and byways of southeast Michigan tonight. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. And we appreciate everything those crews are doing to try to keep us safe with icy roads possible. Be sure to wake up with Brandon and Kim for a look at the road conditions before you head out the door for your morning commute. Local 4 News today starts at 4.30 a.m. Expect a $6.5 billion announcement from General Motors tomorrow. The Detroit automaker set to invest those dollars on plants in Delta Township and the Orion Assembly Plant. Mara McDonald live in Orion Township tonight, and that plant, Mara, slated to become GM's third electric vehicle plant. That's right, Devin, and with it bringing 2,300 new jobs here to Orion Township, that new facility in Delta Township, that looks to be getting 1,700 new jobs. Let me show you. Tomorrow, the state's Economic Development Corporation is expected to give the go-ahead for an incentive package for General Motors. The automaker wants to build an electric vehicle battery plant on land it already owns near its existing Delta Township plant. The total investment there, $2.5 billion and 1,700 new jobs. But GM wants to spend $4 billion at its Orion assembly. Just over a dozen years ago, we were in jeopardy of losing the plant, and it was at that time a great effort by the state and the county and the township to keep them open in there. And that's when they started investing in, in battery and, and um, high
hybrid technology in, in Orion. Barnett and the township board were always looking for ways to keep the plant humming. It's now, assuming the MEDC signs off on the deal, a spot to build electric pickup trucks. And with that comes 2,300 new jobs. The impact of this will be certainly felt in Orion Township, but all over Oakland County and really the entire Southeast Michigan region. Uh, when you're talking about the potential, and again, we're excited to hear the announcement tomorrow from General Motors, uh, but the potential for thousands of new jobs and all of the other things that go along uh, with, with building cars. Back here live, expect an announcement out of GM tomorrow, but also expect a press conference for the governor, and this couldn't be better for her, especially as far as timing goes. Expect her to talk about this tomorrow as well as at her State of the State address this week. We're live in Orion Township tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Local four. Exactly right, Mara. In fact, you teed that up for us quite nicely. For the second straight year, Governor Whitmer will be delivering the State of the State address virtually. We will be bringing you the governor's remarks live, both on air and at clickondetroit.com. Our live coverage gets started Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Detroit police arrest the man they say gunned down a liquor store clerk last week on the city's west side, and it's not the only crime he's accused of committing. Jason Colthorpe there live tonight with the latest. Jason, good evening. Good evening, Kim. And the employees here at Andy's Market, uh, before they closed up, didn't want to go on camera, but they told me they were very happy to hear about this break in this case and the murder of their friend and coworker. It was a cold-blooded killing. Video from inside Andy's Market on James Cousins, January 17th, shows the moments before the shooting. What you don't see here is 64-year-old Benham Rasho walk out of the register area and the man in the video opening fire. Police say that man then pointed the gun at another employee, forced them to open the registers, and then took off with cash. Rasho died at the scene. The week-long manhunt ended when members of the Detroit Police Special Response Team, the 8th Precinct, and undercovers were able to track the suspect down. Police say the man arrested is also responsible for a robbery at the Golden Beauty Supply Shop on Seven Mile. And he should be arraigned as early as tomorrow. We expect to learn a lot more about this suspect when that happens. Live on the West Side tonight, Jason Coulter, Local 4. Okay, Jason, we're seeing signs of improvement in Michigan's COVID-19 fight. State reporting 39,372 cases. That's a three-day total, so the daily average sitting at 13,000 cases a day. We've lost another 36 lives. Beaumont Health says it is starting to see a drop, though, in COVID hospitalizations. On January 10th, Beaumont had 857 COVID patients across their system. Today, that's down to 530. But despite that improvement, doctors warn it is not the time to drop other precautions. We need to avoid crowds. We need to socially distance. We need to get vaccinated. Because you know what? We don't know what's next, right? Will Omicron surge again? Maybe. Will we get another variant? Any variant we get at this point is likely to be built off Omicron. 64.9% of eligible Michiganders have received at least one dose of the vaccine. Tomorrow, an emergency bond hearing will be held for the man accused of shooting at Wayne County deputies. 18-year-old Alex Haley faces assault and weapons charges after he allegedly shot at deputies during an attempted traffic stop last Thursday near Harper and Whittier in Detroit. A judge granted Haley a $100,000 personal bond. However, the Wayne County Sheriff is seeking a higher bond for his crime, saying what he did was not acceptable. Tonight, President Biden is apologizing for using profanity in an exchange caught on a hot mic. It's what happened when a reporter with Fox News asked the president if he thought inflation was a political liability in the midterms. That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son. Tonight, CNN is reporting the president has since called that reporter and apologized for the remarks.